So you have installed Raspberry Pi operating system on your Raspberry Pi board and you want to start writing Python programs immediately? Well, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get started with the Sony Python IDE. So the first step is, of course, start the Python IDE. And where to find it? Well, the first good news is that it's already installed for you when you install Raspberry Pi operating system. So you can go click on the menu icon and then programming and then you see here Sony Python IDE. So you can click on this and you get to the IDE. So IDE means Integrated Development Environment. Basically, this means that you get everything you need to write code. So you have a text editor, you have some nice functionalities to be more productive. You can save programs, open them, you can debug programs and many more things. And we are going to see a few things here. So the step two now, when you first launch the Sony Python IDE, is to click here on switch to regular mode. Because this is the simplified mode and it's, it's really too simplified. So you are missing a lot of things. So switch to regular mode, you can click on OK. It's still the simplified mode, so what you need to do now is to close the Python IDE and start it again. And now you can see the interface has changed and this is the regular mode. Now step number three, well, so you have a text editor here, but you also have here a shell. And in this shell, you can actually write some Python command directly, so to test your code directly. If you ever close the shell, you can go on view here and click on shell and it will appear again. And I'm going to increase the font size here if you want to go to view and you can see increase font size, you have the shortcut here and decrease font size, you have the shortcut as well here. Okay, like this, it's good. So one of the most basic Python command is the print. So I'm writing print here, for example, open parenthesis, say hello, Raspberry Pi. So you can see print turn purple here, which means that you have correctly written it. And now I can press enter and you can see hello, Raspberry Pi. So directly you write some command, you press enter and it's going to execute the command immediately. So that's very good to test some simple commands or for example, to try to import a library Check if the library is correctly installed. Okay, so now that you can write commands in the shell, step number four, you can write a program here in the text editor. So I'm going to write the same program. I'm going to put print. Let's let's put just uh, hello RPI to make it different. And so here you can have different commands. Okay, you can I can for example have this command. Uh, let's say one and let's say two. So, well, you can actually write a complete Python program here and first you write the program and then you can execute it. Because in the shell, you can only execute one command at a time. So that's not very convenient when you start to write bigger programs. So here I have my first program, which contains uh, two prints. I can click on this run button here. So you are in your Py, let's move this. You are in your Py directory here. So you can name your file, let's say my first program.py. Make sure you don't put any space. Okay. And then you can click on OK here. And it's going to run. So now it's my first program.py. And you can see here, run the program. Hello, API 1 and 2. So of course, this tutorial is not a complete Python tutorial or Python course. If you want to learn more about Python and Raspberry Pi, you can check out my online course to start learning Raspberry Pi and Python from scratch. The link is in the description. So now you can use the shell, you can create your own programs and save them when running them. You can also go on file, okay, to save them. You can open previous programs, etc. And step number five, use the auto completion. What is the auto completion? Basically, you start to write some command, some function, whatever, and then you press on control and space, and it will try to automatically write the end of the command. 
So in this case, I start with PR and I have three different options. So you can navigate through the options and then press enter and I have print. So that can be really convenient when you have functions or variables that are quite long and it's going to save you a lot, a lot of time. Okay, so here, if I go back, I just press control space and because print is the only command recognized that starts with PIR, then it's automatically completed. Otherwise, you will have the choice uh, like before. Step number six, how to debug your programs. So that will be super useful. Let's say you have, so I'm going to create some variables here. A is equal to two and then B is equal to uh, A plus one and then A is equal to five, okay? So I just create and modify some variables here and what I want to check is what is the value of A and B here? What is value of A and B here, etc. So I can debug the program and eventually know where an error can come from. So you can click here on view and variables. This will open a new panel on the right here. So make it shorter like this. And now to debug the code. So if I just run the code like this, so it's gonna run the code and that's it. But what I can do is I can click here, debug current script. And now what happened is that you can see we have a yellow highlighting here. We are at line one. So the program will be executed line by line, but it will wait for you to go to the next execution line. So you can click this step over, okay? And you can see that after line one, we have the variable A, which value is two. I click once again. After line two, we have the variable B, which is equal to three, okay? And then once again, after line three, then we have variable A, which is equal to five, and b which is equal to three. So you can see the evolution of variables here. Okay, I continue. Here you can see the text which is printed and I continue again and now the program is finished. So debugging what's inside your variables can be really quite useful. And you can also see which line gets executed or not. And step number seven here, with Tony Python IDE, you also get a nice way to handle errors so let's say I forget this parenthesis here, okay? And then I try to run the program. I have an error, okay? So in the shell, you can see, so print here, you have the line, which is line number six, and then syntax error, unexpected. So EOF is end of file while passing. So basically, you know that when you have this error, you have to put back the parenthesis. And you also have an assistant here that may give you some additional help. So now I have corrected my error. I run the program again and it's working correctly. All right, so with those seven steps, you should be able to get started with the Thorny Python IDE. If you liked this video, subscribe to get more tutorials like this in the future. Also, check out my online courses so you can learn Raspberry Pi step by step in an efficient way by practicing and directly going to the point. Links in the description. Alright, thank you for watching, see you in the next tutorial or in one of my courses.